The attacks of 9-11 cemented Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda as America's number one enemy, on par with Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s and communist Russia for three decades that followed. The attacks rattled the U.S. and so did the chilling government warnings that followed. Tonight we are a country awakened to danger. We think there are Al-Qaeda in some 90 different countries, including here in the United States. Al-Qaeda was a vast and powerful network of terrorists, Washington said, with cells inside the U.S. plotting another attack. We've thwarted terrorists in Buffalo, in Seattle, Portland, Detroit, North Carolina, and Tampa, Florida. The alleged threats cost Washington billions of dollars in security measures. For many Americans, it cost them their sense of security. They also spawned what analysts like Mideast expert Reza Aslan call the lucrative terrorism industry. Security companies, intelligence experts, defense contractors who made millions sounding the alarm on Al-Qaeda. This terrorism industry has done a pretty good job of raking in millions of dollars by convincing Americans that terrorists are around every corner and that every man, woman, and child in America is under direct threat from Al-Qaeda. But not a single member of those alleged U.S. terror cells was ever convicted of plotting an attack in the U.S. There have been failed attempts from lone suspects whose connection to Al-Qaeda is doubtful. September 2009, FBI agents arrest Najibullah Zazi and foil a plot to bomb the New York City subway system. Christmas Day 2009, Omar Farouk Abdulmatalib's underwear bomb fizzles out as passengers subdue him in a plane over Detroit, Michigan. May 2010, Faisal Shazad's homemade car bomb fails to detonate in New York's Times Square. The facts show Al-Qaeda hasn't killed a single American on U.S. soil since 9-11. And a look at the recent history of Al-Qaeda suggests the likelihood of another attack on the scale of 9-11 is low. You are more likely to be struck by lightning than to be killed by a terrorist in this country. Last month, John Miller, former senior intelligence official in the Obama administration, told CNN's Fareed Zakaria effective U.S. counterterrorism and Al Qaeda's diminishing resources have rendered the group largely ineffective. So, net net, does Al Qaeda have the capability today to launch another attack on the scale of 9 11? Uh, that is very unlikely. Yet the fear of al-Qaeda seems to linger in America's psyche. And reminders at the airport and in the Patriot Act of civil rights that Americans have given up in the name of security. Outside the U.S., groups linked to al-Qaeda have carried out attacks. In Madrid in 2004, London in 2005, Algiers in 2007. So the possibility of an attack is there. Experts say America should be watchful. But maybe Osama bin Laden's death and al-Qaeda's recent track record of failure will remove its title as America's big bad enemy and cripple its ability to create fear, even at the mention of al-Qaeda's name. Reza Sayyid, CNN, Islamabad.